Este. This is a great anniversary, but uh, a great deal of it happened because of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, now, what do you want? And thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, give me, give me this opportunity to uh, to address you because uh, it's an opportunity for me to do the same. And that is, uh, Coquitlam is one of the communities that jumped in on the idea of the Trans Canada Trail. Very, very early on, and uh, and was ready in time for our our relay that happened in year 2000, and uh, and the staff uh, worked with us diligently and uh, got quite a bit done. So um, I've got, I guess I just pressed the red button here. So um, I, I'll do this little presentation with uh, the slides to make sure that I don't go more than 50 minutes. Oh no. <laughs> and uh, so I don't need to convince you about about the, um, the necessity of trails for our well-being. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm spending the first part here to just look at what we have right now as far as the Trans Canada Trail through uh, through Coquitlam, and then talk about uh, where we might make some improvements. And. Um, but in case some of you don't know uh, what the uh, Trans Canada Trail is all about, it, the idea is that we want to connect uh, communities. And, and of course, we're trying to do this in a non motorized way. We try to, in fact, be, be separated from the, uh, from the motorized and, and easy. Mm. Not loud enough here? No, boy. Uh, and we're trying to. Uh, make it easy for people to wayfind because it's a it's a problem uh, for people if they you know if, when they get lost and so on and it discourages them and of course it brings people to the, to all kinds of features in the community and hopefully uh, there are, uh, we have ways of showing them how to to take advantage of these uh, these amenities that are in the, in the community and features that are in the community and um, the thing that we're really trying to work on is to give people a quality experience. And by giving people a quality experience, we've got something to market. If we don't, if, we, if they have a poor experience, it's not truly marketable. And of course, this right now we're in the um, in the mode where we would like to make this a legacy for uh, Canada 150 which is also the 25th anniversary of the Trans Canada Trail. Um, and the idea here, well, there are presentations made to the federal government, and there's money put forward to uh, help make the Trans Canada Trail a legacy for Canada 150. So the trail through, uh, through Coquitlam uh, follows Guilford Way, as you, as you know, and then um, it, and it goes through, uh, um, Coquitlam Center Park along Lafarge Lake and then uh, finds its way along the uh, Coquitlam River and then crosses over on the Patricia Pedestrian Bridge, continues in the Coquitlam River Park and then uh, we jump over to Deboville Slough where there's a little bit of confusion about whether or not the trail is truly in Coquitlam or in Port Coquitlam but it's part of the Poco Trail. So there's 1.7 kilometers along the sidewalk along Guilford Way, 0.7 kilometers along White Creek, 0.2 kilometers through Pine Tree Campus, 
which is an experience in itself. Uh, it, it's kind of a unique place for people to go through uh, because it has, it's a campus not only of a college but of a high school and it's also a community center. We get through uh, 1.5 kilometers through the town center park and then 3.8 kilometers along the Coquitlam River Park. And of course, uh, the idea behind the Trans Canada Trail, it connects communities and so it's connecting us with Port Moody and on the other side, Port Coquitlam. And um, it provides connections to uh, a number of walking, cycling loops uh, along the way. And um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, Coquitlam has some features that people are seeking. And one is, of course, the town center park. Uh, the Coquitlam River Park is definitely uh, a, a big feature and very popular. Um, Scott Creek, uh, Hoy Creek, and Coquitlam River, as we know, they're salmon bearing uh, streams and attract a lot of people. And now you have the Coquitlam Crunch, which is amazing. <laughs> I'd like to talk more about that. I've, I actually went up and down that just uh, last week. Um, I counted the steps. Yes, there are 440. <laughs> <laughs> and it connects uh, a number of uh, civic um, amenities along the way, which includes schools, four schools. And of course, it connects with this, uh, this civic center here and with the Port Moody Civic Center and the uh, Eagle Ridge Hospital and so on. So there's there's a lot going on along the Trans Canada Trail along Guilford Way, and it's, uh, and it's getting more and more a parkway. I would prefer to look at it as a parkway instead of just a you know a, a place that you commute through. And it is partially a parkway because of its boulevard and there's a lot of greenway along that Guilford Way. So um, how did this all come about? Well, the Trans-Canada Trail Pavilion uh, was financed by the Trans-Canada Trail, but luckily, Coquit luckily for us, Coquitlam found a really beautiful site for the, for the pavilion, and uh, it still stands there today proudly, and it's a, it can be a gathering spot to go from one location to the other along the Trans-Canada Trail. Uh, Coquitlam built 2.5 kilometers of new trail along the Coquitlam River Park, and uh, and it was done with the idea of uh, bringing the Coquitlam. I think it's it sort of accelerated something that the uh, Coquitlam wanted in the first place, but nonetheless, it got built for the Trans Canada Trail in time for its grand opening. And there were there was a lot of volunteer services and so on that that got involved with this, but mainly it was the uh, uh, unemployed fishermen that worked on that trail. And it was completed in the year 2000, open on Canada Day of that year. It was ready for the really 2000 across Canada. Uh, uh, Coquitlam uh, put up 89 signs uh, f uh, to, uh, f so people can find their way. Uh, the logo signs are provided by the Trans Canada Trail, and now the the logo has been redesigned, and there'll be uh, uh, Coquitlam now has the new uh, signs for so that we'll be ready for 2017 with the new logo signs. So they just need to be replaced. They're getting pretty uh, pretty faded, and so on. There's interpretive signage, but uh, so, some of it is, has been put up by, uh, by Coquitlam, but there are 10 TCT interpretive signs that, being, that were provided by the Trans Canada Trail and the Brompton Foundation. So um, along, along the way, um, we, you know, it would be, we're looking at seeing ways of improving things, making things more attractive for, for the user. And uh, the problem that we have along Guilford Way is that there's a bike lane on the road, but that, that caters to experienced cyclists. The recreational cyclists uh, uh, may not want to, uh, to 
to go with, you know, to travel with cars. And, uh, and in order to follow it, they, we have to follow in the same direction as the flow of traffic if you're on a bicycle. And that means that we probably would need to put signage on both sides of the road to make it easier to, to find our way. It might be enough to make the north sidewalk a shared sidewalk with bicycles, but what would be better if somehow we could widen that whole section, 1.72 kilometers, between uh, the boundary of uh, Port Moody and Hoy Creek and, uh, and make that a, uh, um, a shared trail with pedestrians and cyclists. And it's mainly cyclists like uh, school children and so on, and uh, people my age would use that, that recreational path because the commuter path would always be there for those people who are in a hurry. So uh, the only other place where there's a, a need to, where the trail needs a little bit of help, and, it's, it's, and it has a little bit to do with some of the uh, uh, construction that's going on on G Gabriela Drive. Uh, there's a, we need to put lines on the road or something so people can find their way between two trail connections there. So the, the real, one of the reasons why I, I wanted to make this presentation is, of course, I wanted to be sure that people here know Trans Canada Trail really appreciates what, what's been done so far. But would like uh, Council to consider a resolution to study this 1.72 kilometers along Guilford Way to make that a shared trail for recreational users. And there's, uh, you know, there's a variety of reasons why this would be useful for the community, not only for the Trans Canada Trail. But one, it, one is, of course, safety for, for young children. I live right near there, and I use that uh, corridor <coughs> every day, practically. And I see uh, children attempting to use the sidewalk because they don't want to be on the road. And there's adults, too, who are, are riding their bikes on the sidewalk because <coughs> they don't feel safe along the road. They just don't want to compete with the traffic. And the, the nice thing about that section is that there are no private driveways that come, uh, come on to the, uh, that would come on there. So you're not crossing anything like that. And it would, and it would be uh, similar to what you're doing uh, along David Avenue and so on. So it exists in a lot of communities. It, uh, in North Vancouver, we're doing, you know, there's the Spirit Trail that's uh, being upgraded to this level and things like this. So it, it would just create a better flow for the Trans Canada Trail. But I think it would really uh, bring about a fantastic amenity or greater amenity for the people who use it. I sure would like to see more children use uh, the pathways to get to, this, to their schools along that, that route. So uh, the 1.72 kilometers that I'm talking about is this stretch over here, what you see in green there. And then it could be extended to the evergreen line. Uh, and that would be the little bit of blue there. So from Hoy Creek to the evergreen line station, uh, that would work too. So that's just another thought here. <clears throat> Along with this, I don't know, do I have a, a minute or two more? Out of your five minutes, you mean? Yes. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, as well as this, uh, when, uh, for, the, for the Trans Canada Trail, as part of the Trans Canada Trail network, uh, we're wanting to make the Lower Mainland a destination for people who want to come here and stay for a while and use our trails. And there's nothing better than loop trails to attract people. And we would like to market that, but we want to, we want to put something in there that people can really use and can find easily and so on. So we're working on a, on a project right now where we're putting these trails, these loops up on our website People download the tracks onto their <coughs> smartphones and can follow these right now. 
it's just amazing what we have in the Lower Mainland in terms of greenways and being able to connect all these parks that we have in the Lower Mainland. And I've taken groups on these loops and they, they, they just don't believe what we have. It's just amazing. So uh, with Coquitlam, uh, we've, uh, we've designed or we're working on a loop trail that takes in the Tri-Cities and a bit of Port uh, Burnaby and creating a one-day loop with sub-loops in between. And, uh, and that uh, would be a destination. And all we're requesting here, I mean, we're just talking about something that exists, right? But all we're uh, wanting to uh, get from various councils is just, uh, first of all, uh, the knowledge that we're trying to do this and also uh, approval from you to allow this to happen. And uh, it, over time, it might you know, we might want to sign it and do this kind of thing, but for the time being, we would like to just indicate that this exists and here's a way you can do it. And we can work it with websites. That's pretty well what I had in mind for you. Well, it's perfect because your, your five minutes is up now. <laughs> I thought so. I, I, but I, I, I'm I, French, I, as you know. Yes. It takes a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen the side of the boxes, the cereal boxes. We have Lou, Terry, and May. Thank you very much. Me. Uh, Thanks, great presentation. Uh, are the fat government still involved in, in, in funding the, uh, the trails across Canada? Yes, um, Trans Canada Trail is funded by donors mainly, but of course uh, there are subsidies that have been coming from the federal government, and there's been a fair bit that's come into British Columbia from the federal government in establishing the Trans Canada Trail, and right now we're tapping t into a $25 million pot uh, for this legacy project, but we. Uh, for every dollar that we, if every two dollars that we put in, they put in one dollar. So, but there's a sharing uh, okay. opportunity yeah. there. Yes. Yeah, because I remember when I was in Ottawa, I, yeah, I traveled through different parts of British Columbia and gave money to the different uh, communities for uh, this uh, for the trail program. Uh, so, and I don't know what portion it was or whatever it was, but it's, it's now 12, 14 years ago. But anyways. Uh, uh, it's a good program, connects the communities, and certainly, you know, I, I'd, I'd hope that the federal government probably, we had a share, one third, one, we had the federal government put in one third, the provincial government one third, and the city one third, and they are a lot easier. Thank you. Terry? Thank you. Thank you. That's a question for staff. Um, the, uh, I believe this last summer, a uh, council passed a 10 year. Uh, trail plan and I don't believe there was any um, any indication of any improvements along the corridor that, that uh, Leon is talking about is that correct uh, I guess uh, yeah come up sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. sorry uh, yes um, uh, through the chair yeah, there was um, uh, the, the, the trail, the master trails plan um, identified a number of trail improvements throughout the city, but in terms of this corridor, there was nothing identified. In fact, the way it was done is because it's an actual street corridor, um, it's part of, a, of a, an integrated um, mobility corridor, it's a certain level of, 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 of mobility on there. There is an existing uh, on-street bicycle facility and a sidewalk, and that was referenced as part of the, the strategic transportation plan, which is how we referenced that type of, of um, conveyance, in other words, that type of mobility corridor. So we acknowledge that, that is, uh, there's connections as part of the, the, the strategic transportation plan along Guilford, which dictate a certain level of corridor. In this case, it would be a sidewalk with a, uh, with a bikeway integrated into the road. So that's how we acknowledged it in there. Right, and um, so, 1.72 kilometer off-road uh, and this is a question for Leon that would be essentially expansion of the sidewalk 
taking unused the, the boulevard space that's grass that's just to the north of the sidewalk and that's what you see and and then having the bike lane as well and then having a, a multi-use pathway is that yes yeah. <clears throat> uh, similar to what's uh, what has been begun in Port Moody it would be a continuation of what uh, what they're doing in Port Moody but exactly the same the same kind of thing that would create that continuity of that pathway and uh, like I say it's um, uh, it's very popular already the sidewalks are, are well used along with the uh, cycling uh, corridor you know uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of cyclists that use that uh, that corridor and um, but also, uh, we talk about mobility. We have people with wheelchairs and um, electric uh, uh, mobility devices. Uh, they're having problems with the, with the sidewalk, too, as it is. It's quite narrow, actually. So that's another issue. And they are trying to get from, from these places that we're going to. The other thing, too, is that the Guilford Corridor is not hilly, like a lot of the other corridors that we have here in Coquitlam this is one area where it's quite flat uh, it's accessible to everyone and it does ac access a lot of facilities and you would see the two-way traffic uh, on the Transcanada Trail all on one side all on the north side of that yes is that I, what you want to see there okay so you want to just mark it yeah well after looking at it over and over and over and over again the north side would be the you know the most appropriate there are elementary schools and the middle school and you know all the schools except the high school is on the other side but you know they can easily cross and now there's the evergreen line that's coming up at the other end and do you have any idea what it would cost to uh, essentially double the width of that sidewalk well i would be only guessing but it, I, would, I would it depends what you would do if it meant you know, I would imagine that the engineers here would look at that and say, well, let's do what they did in Port Moody for a section. They took out the sidewalk and they just made it into a, a, a unified asphalt pathway. If you're just widening the pathway, then, of course, it would cost a lot less. I think there would be a few little <coughs> retaining walls to put here and there, and that's what would bring up the cost. But but generally, most of it, there's, there's a lot of room there. And I watch the, uh, the children at, the, at Scott Creek School. They're, you know, they're doing all their runs. On, you know, they're going around the school, along that sidewalk, into the grass. And, and it, it, there's no doubt in my mind that it would be <coughs> extensively used. The cost, my guess, would be about $200,000. Thank you. This gives us something to think about. Appreciate it. You? Me? Well, I think the cost is probably going to be a little more than two hundred thousand dollars. We can't even build a bathroom for four hundred thousand dollars. So, um, just to the engineer, um, any guesstimate on for multi-use pathway or um, per kilometer? sidewalk now yeah there's a sidewalk but between the sidewalk and the property line it's only less if there is a retaining wall yeah and depending on the exact location of the retaining wall relocating that wall to provide enough room for a multi-use pathway can be very expensive as for under general conditions i'm not sure captain would you want to say that um in general when we're building the multi-use pathways we look at about three hundred dollars per So say we're under a million dollars, um, do we have access to these federal funds for a third of it? We don't know for sure. The funds are there to, um, to uh, get over some really difficult gaps along the trail, like 
big bridges, big projects. So those take priority. And, uh, and of course, we <coughs> that funding is for projects right across the country. But my guess is that uh, if we have uh, projects that are ready to go, and uh, there's going to be a panic to to use up that money near the end, is my guess. When's the end? Uh, well, it's uh, as we get into 2016. Uh, <clears throat> my guess is there's going to be a panic there and say, okay, uh, we're going to open up <laughs> the gates a little bit because the way they've set it up now, it's really difficult to access the money. Okay, thank you. And my last comment, Eric, our new tourism director, is here with us today, and perhaps you can grab Leon on his way out and um, have a chat because we also were talking about some um, uh, apps and things like that for trails and looping and all that. So, Love we, to do that. Yep, he's going to watch where you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I've written the uh, roadway version, and we used to, in fact, Mike Clay used to make the joke that you knew when you got to Coquitlam, you had nice signs that welcome to Coquitlam, and you knew you got to Port Moody because the bike lane ended. And, uh, and, and bike, Port Moody has done a little bit now, and they've, on, particularly on the south side of Cayuco, uh, but uh, clearly that, there's a gap there in the connection between Eagle Ridge Hospital and yeah, small gap you know, there. Yeah, it's, it's, so now you're, you're relegated to the road and no matter what you do. So I, I foresee this particular 1.7 as being, I think, a pretty easy project to undertake. Uh, <laughs> have you contemplated whether one on either side, one on both sides? Um, you, you mentioned that the north side would work really well, but there, it seems to me that almost all the way that route, other than at the 7-Eleven, there is a pretty easy pass on the south side. Not suggesting it, but I assume you've ruled it out for some reason. Well, either way, for us, it's you know it doesn't it doesn't really matter that much. The, the main reason that I ruled it out is that I thought, as far as school children and so on, it would be better on the north side. And then they, there would be fewer uh, crossings of you know, having them cross the uh, uh, Guilford. When we were coming here, there was an accident at the corner of <laughs> corner of Johnson and and Guilford there, and holy smokes! Anyway, um, you, we I I really feel even you know as an experienced cyclist, um, I don't I feel uneasy cycling along uh, Guilford right now. I mean, there's an awful lot of traffic there, and people are turning, you know, and. Uh, at the various streets and so on. It's it's really quite concerning. It would be a wonderful, wonderful amenity. No, I, I, I don't question it at all. I think uh, you, you, you have struck upon a, a section of road that doesn't have any driveways other than, say, Eagle Ridge Elementary, I think is about the only, sorry, Eagle Ridge Pool is probably the only yes. driveway that I think it, that it crosses that section. So I, I would love to see us put this into the mix and see if we can get the, the the, the plan at least designed and, and get it on a priority list so we can be ready when some funding does get available. Yeah, and, and that's pretty well what I'm requesting is as a resolution to have it studied you know, to see if, it, uh, if it's feasible. Yeah, sounds good. Fred? Thank you, Leo. Um, I support our staff taking a look at this study. It needs to report back to staff on on the ability the actual cost and a rough estimates not the exact estimates i also see the other part to this is i think in that area there's also probably going to need, need to be land taking also which would probably add to the cost there i don't think we have the boulevard in all those areas so we'd have to negotiate with the property owners along that stretch so i i, I like the idea that um up in the northeast i was one of the person that pushed for the three meter and the extension of the three meter pathway all along david all the way up to jim back there in the early stages to get that put in, just not the trail going down there, but to have it along the road. So that's, I was hoping to get it down Coast Marine, but because of fisheries, we couldn't fit in. We did get, but those things I like to see. And, and that was a new area, so it's a lot easier. So I'm supportive of staff going away, taking a look at this, and in and, and a rough cursory come back to council. We'll have to see what the costs are, and then we can start to find out how we can access the federal money. 